Sure, uh, I would really categorize, it's not one pivotal moment. I've had three in my career. The first one was I wanted to be a professional cricketer. Uh, this is before uh, I really got into the workforce and I really embarked on that. And in those days, uh, cricket was not a well-paying job. And I realized very quickly that in order to be successful, as it was termed, I needed to have a well-paying job and I got into an engineering school, got a degree there, and that really shaped me into a technologist, made me think as a technician, if you may. So that was my first pivotal moment. And then I came to the US way back in time, went through the dot-com times, and that really was the second moment in my lifetime where I saw rapid growth, and along with rapid growth, the ability to influence across industries. And that is something that I learned, that yes, I had all the technical chops, if you may, by that time to say, I can learn something, I can make an impact, but I didn't have the business knowledge. So that was really the second pivotal moment where I went back to school and said, let me learn about business. And as I was doing that, I did my first startup, which was a very successful exit in the social media space, which was before Facebook. And as I was going through that, I learned that you can embark on new technologies at a rapid pace. So the business knowledge and technologies really came together. And then my third real pivotal moment was when I was at Stanford University and saying, I have academia knowledge now, how do I really embark on societal changes? And that's when I really started thinking big and saying, I have the business skills, the technology skills, and now how do you go and work with governmental agencies, put in policies that really make a meaningful impact in people's lives? So it's not only companies, now you make changes in the world. Like I said uh, during my presentation, Technologies have evolved. AI as a term really started in 1953 uh, at CMU uh, when Turing talked about uh, thinking machines. So then on, AI has been around. But what I've noticed in the past maybe 24 months, let me give us say 30 months, is people are worried about losing jobs. And when you really think, not only as a company, but think of societies, what happens when people lose jobs en masse? How do they earn a livelihood? So that's where we as technology leaders need to step in and say, all right, here's a new technology. It's not going to really have mass layoffs. There will be job transformation. There won't be job loss. As leaders, we need to be able to communicate that. And then at the same time, also think of how can we lead our teams to have a meaningful upskilling cycle as technologies evolve. That's one thing that I really want to stress as much as I can. Never leave your people behind. Upskill them. That will have a meaningful impact in the societies because if people have jobs, they have buying power, there's peace in the society. A couple of things. This is my first uh, piece here, uh, first time around. I do a lot of talking. Actually, I have another talk in three hours from now. So I go to a lot, lot of events. And in my opinion, the experience really changes from the time you are invited to talk. It's not only about the talk itself. The level of engagement right from the time you're invited to talk, you come to the event, your check-in process, and then your eventual presentation. That's got to, there's got to be zero friction in that. And that's what I found in this series compared to some of the others where you're invited to talk until one day before, you don't know when you're talking, what's the topic, and so on and so forth. It's been very, very transformative, if I may, because there's been like zero friction in this entire process. And then coming here, uh, talking, I've met some great people in the past two hours and uh, we've got further discussions already planned out. So it's been a very seamless and a beautiful experience till now. On a scale of one to five, five being outstanding, I would put it very close to five. Uh, and I don't say it just because I'm on camera. 
when someone comes in to talk, they want to be able to share what they have been doing. And, and my talks are typically not specific to technology. And when I came in and I talked about my research and about the work that I've been doing uh, uh, with societies and companies and governments, I'll be honest, uh, coming in, I thought, mm, I don't know if it's the all technology crowd, would they appreciate what I'm going to talk about? But the feedback has been amazing. And that's why I say it's been an outstanding experience on a scale of one to five, because people resonate with that kind of a thinking. And that's credit to the company who curated the audience, as well as had a, had a great experience for me coming in. A couple of things. I think you're not throwing vendors at me, which I really, really, really appreciate. A typical trade show, you're invited to talk and then you're almost tied to your desk and saying, thou shalt speak to at least five vendors, otherwise we are going to take your car keys away. It's not like that, which is so good. You have the ability to have a seamless conversation with people. And if you have conversations rather than a hardcore agenda, check the box thing, that's so much better, both for the vendors, both for me. And I think that's what really helps. Thank you.